we're in Tokyo! For this trip to Japan, we came to Tokyo with the express purpose of having epic foods, and we did exactly that. Here are my nine favorite restaurants that you just have to check out. Okay guys, we're in the basement of the Tokyo department store in the B1 level. It's right by a supermarket tucked away in the corner, but we've heard really good reviews of this sushi spot. It's called Eurekan Kaizen Sushi. And what we ordered today is this guy, the fatty tuna set and the seasonal sushi set. It's here! When you look at what we have here, the fatty tuna set, it's a blue fin collar. Wow, this looks really good. So they asked us if they want wasabi inside, and we said yes, so the wasabi is actually already inside. Don't need to add any additional wasabi. Oh my god. Melt in your mouth. Wow, this is good. And this is only 1500 yen, which is about 16 Canadian dollars. This is a steal. Look at how many pieces you get. Mm. Don't mind me. They got over here that the scallions on this roll, fatty tuna as well. Mm. All you need is a dab of soy sauce, but it's it's a bit of a diced up tuna. Just as not as you don't taste the fat as much just because it's all mixed in together. But the scallions really complement the flavor. It gives it kind of a, a little bit of a sweet taste and a little bit of a different texture as well. So Chantel here has the seasonal sushi chef. Oh god. <laughs> sushi. So oh really good. It's so fresh. I'll say that the sushi set wasn't as good. This fatty tuna was the bomb. Definitely get this one though. Look at this. This work of art. So coming to Yuriki was definitely a very good choice. The sushi here was absolutely superb and at really good prices. So if you come here, definitely get the fatty tuna set as you saw. Really good. So after an hour and a half wait, we're finally inside Shin Udon. We ordered outside and it was pretty much ready once we got here. So what I got here is the cold udon noodles. This has radish, yuzu, and tempura of flying fish. I have no idea what that is, but they recommended it, so we're gonna give this a shot. It's supposed to be the best udon in town. Just a little bit. We got some scallions here as well. I've been seeing them making it fresh, so I know this is good. Mm, good. Like, is that? It's bouncy texture. You can tell it was made fresh. The yuzu gives it a nice, like, sweet and sour kind of taste. Actually, the radish is really, really good. I don't know how they made this, but very good. Really good bounce. It's like, not like the frozen udon you have back home. It's not soggy at all. Kind of like a fish cake, but cut in half. The reason why we knew cold udon was the thing to get was because, <laughs> funnily enough, we were standing in front of two guys. Uh, one of the guys actually works at another udon place near Tokyo Station, and he said, like, you gotta do the cold udon. If you really wanted to taste, um, you know, the, the proper udon and have it fresh, cold udon is the way to go, because otherwise, in the soup, he said that, it basically sits and, um, I guess, does get a bit soggy. So, I also got the cold noodle as well. Um, so this one here comes with the shrimp tempura, chicken, and also the um, rice. Oh yeah, I guess that's the that looks like the flying the flying fish cake. Yeah. Right. Mm. Like this is like. Wow, it is really bouncy. The chicken I just had, nice and juicy. Yeah. Tender, really good. I'm really I I surprised. Like I'm really surprised. It's Worth the wait. Well, it's the end of the night, and what better way to end off our day by coming to Shinjuku and Piss Alley. This is, I think, Memories Lane is the alternate uh, name for it, but essentially it's this really narrow um, alleyway that's been filled with all these like yakitori different restaurants all the way through. We found some ramen as well, other barbecue places, but we didn't know where to go, so we just picked the first one that we saw pretty much near the entrance, and this is where we are at. So what we got here is the six-piece yakitori, uh, for 900 yen and it has everything from like meatballs to I think liver, gizzard, um, chicken, scallion. So we're excited to try all these different things. Beer to wash it down, but the right way to do it to yakitori. Nice soy glaze on top, like teriyaki sauce. So many choices. Oh yeah, it's chicken skin. Liver, if this is liver, not usually a big fan. Oh, it's not bad. 
It's chewy. All right, so I'll be the first to admit that the yakitori here isn't premium level, but still pretty good. Now, just the ambiance is awesome. Beer's great. Uh, kind of a really neat place to come out with friends and just really to end off the night here in Tokyo. But there's one thing you gotta know. So we just paid the bill and we found out that there is a sitting fee, at least at this place, for 300 yen. So 300 yen per person, that means 600 just for sitting here, and then the order comes on top. So what we thought was gonna be 1,400 turned out to be 2,000. Okay, so we made it to Tsukiji Fish Market. We went down an alley and into a small entrance that you never would have noticed, but this is Motodane, uh, a friend recommended it to us, and it's essentially a very local sushi restaurant. All of the freshest ingredients, obviously, straight from the market. And so everything here, I mean, the ambiance is, is really local, really, really intense experience. What we have is basically two dishes in front of us. We ordered the sashimi, which is 1,200 yen. And then we also have the 12 piece nigiri, which is 1500 yen. Looks amazing. All right, we're gonna start with the sashimi. This is the tuna sashimi. Really fresh, really fresh. This really has an assortment of everything. I think this is fatty tuna, it might be snapper over there. We got squid. Um, clams, egg, this might be saba, I'm not too sure, mackerel I think, this is mackerel over here with the ginger on top. And here kind of the same but in nigiri format. This might be like um, might be like an octopus. Mm. You got a bit of crisp to it. Delicious, completely authentic, I love it. Mostly locals, a lot of Japanese that come here, so not a lot of tourists actually at all, so this is a hidden gem. Let's try the nigiri. Mm. That was Toro. Still melting your mouth. Not quite as good as Yuriki, but really good. The other part about this place, no lineup at all. Opens up at, I think it was like 10 o'clock or 10.30, but we got here, opened the door, and we got to see right away. So Motidani was a big hit. We really loved the sushi that we had here. Now, coming down this small alley, we never would have thought that there would be something here, but all the locals seem to know to come here. So if you want some sushi and have a hyper local experience, Motidane is the place to come in Tsukiji. So in Japan, there's pretty much a restaurant for any type of dish that you love back home. And we love our tempura. We are actually in a specific tempura restaurant. We're in a department store called Matsuya. Uh, and this restaurant is called Tempura Shinjuku Tsunahachi. Um, so we got pretty much the same set between the two of us, which comes with pretty much a collection of different tempuras from shrimp to vegetables, uh, and sort of other things that I guess we're gonna find out. Um, but our first dish has made it here with the miso, with even a tomato soup, we got rice. What we're gonna be doing now is basically we got our tempura sauce, we got the salts over here, and then the radish. So there's a specific step for how you have tempura. What you do, is essentially you dip it in the soy sauce, you touch the salt. So I guess we gotta we're gonna pick some salt. I'm gonna try the wasabi salt because that's kind of it's kind of different. So I'm gonna put the salt here. We're gonna touch the salt. We're gonna put some radish. Just a little bit of radish on top. This is the proper way to have tempura. This is a grated radish, and then you eat. The batter itself is not salty at all. Um, if you have it by itself, you're not gonna taste the salt. That's why you gotta actually dip it in that salt to get a bit more flavor. Mm. You got a bit of wasabi. I like this wasabi salt there. Okay, so this one is vegetable tempura. Looks pretty funny. I have no idea what kind of vegetable it is. Mmm, it's like the leafy. Perfect level of Christmas. It's not super oily. It's nice that you can balance out the flavors as you wish. The amount of soy sauce, the amount of salt that you want, and the amount of radish. Mmm. Oh, this is eel. Nice big pieces of shrimp in there. So if you're looking for a upper class tempura experience, this place is the one to come to. This is a highly anticipated place. We are on Ramen Street in the Tokyo Metro. We are in a place called Rokunisha, 
probably pronouncing it wrong, but essentially it's one of the top rated uh, ramen restaurants here along the street. Uh, we just put, on our, put in our orders and kind of interesting that you use a machine, you press a few buttons, you put in some money, out comes your ticket, uh, you get back in line and once, it's, once you got your table like we do now, we gave them my tickets and they're going to make our ramen. My special ramen has arrived. I'm really excited to try it out. It's got everything from the scallions to the seaweed. We got this nice thick piece of pork right here. I don't know if you can tell. It's not the thin stuff that you get. It looks like a really nice thick broth. You got bamboo shoots, the ramen noodles, the egg, which is probably my favorite part about the ramen. So the noodles, perfectly done, a la Dante. A really nice bounce. This has a bit of spice to it, um, so nice kick. Okay, so the pork is not hot all the way through. It's a bit cold in the center, but noodles are good. It's a nice bully broth, not too salty. I do want to show you guys the egg, because that's really, for me, what makes a good ramen place is the egg. There we have it. So you still got the wet part of the egg inside, cooked just right on the outside. They don't mess around. It's a nice balance of flavors, not overpowering. So I had a bit of a taste of Chantel's dipped noodles, and I'll say that I think there's a bit too strong of a tuna flavored taste, it almost like canned tuna. Um, better than that, obviously, but it's it's really strong and it's a really thick broth, so that's why you kind of dip it in and you kind of have a taste. But um, definitely for us, maybe not um, not our jam. So I really love that this place is right in the subway station. You can pretty much get off of work or wherever you're transiting through, come down here on the underground, come to Ramen Alley or Ramen Street, and pick any one of these. I think this is obviously the most popular one because it's at the corner and there's obviously long lines all the time but pick any one of these and you're gonna get really good ramen here at Tokyo Station. We are in a restaurant called Nakaya here in Tsukiji Fish Market um, and so it's seven o'clock right now considered to be late to come to one of the better known sushi restaurants but we wanted to try something a little bit different because we've been here before wanting to come to a smaller place one that doesn't have a lot of lines and serves up sushi in a different style. What Nakaya specializes in is essentially chirashi bowls, rice bowls to be exact and so what I have here we ordered two different things and I specifically wanted the toro and sea urchin so mine is just these two things a whole lot of it and it looks absolutely beautiful I might get a tear you got miso soup you also have kind of this pickled clam and you also have pickled radish and tea Chantel also has a different tray and what she has is a different chirashi that is I guess considered a, a mixed bowl and so this mixed bowl has everything from uni to roe to shrimp crab scallop salmon um, that might be snapper uh, octopus tuna all right let's try this Ooh, look at that. That is certifiably melting your mouth. How it works is that once you're outside, the lady takes your order, you just really point at what you're looking at. Uh, you put in your order, and once your seat's ready, you come inside this narrow restaurant. There's not a lot of space, as you can see. Basically, we sat down, and the food came to us in literally 30 seconds. So if you're coming to Tsukiji Fish Market, and you want to have fresh fish on Chirashi, then Nakai is the place to come. So underneath the subway tracks is this crazy establishment. It's called Yakitori Tantan. All they do is basically yakitori, open late and in the evenings for all the, I guess, salarymen and people that you know are getting off work. Travelers like us, there are definitely other tourists around us, but they specialize in skewers and some other things. We got our first item here. This is taco wasabi. Excited to try this because this is one of my favorite izakaya items. Items. But there's basically gonna be a stream of skewers coming our way. Come by. Second up right now are the yakitori green peppers. So for our third item, we have chicken balls. For our fourth dish, this is cartilage skewers. These are chicken cartilage pieces. Sounds scarier than it actually is, but this is really good. 
It's really true. We did it in the soy sauce, this one. For our fifth and sixth skewers, we have chicken and pork. So I think we did both of these like the salt style. Mm. Smoking. You can definitely taste the salt flavors go in. You got a bit of skin on top. It's not overcooked. It's still really tender, actually. It blows like any other yakitori we've had so far out of the water. The pork is definitely much chewier. It's a more dense texture. Not as tender as I expected. I still prefer the chicken, though. This is an amazing experience here at Yakitori Tantan. Kind of, I would say like, out of everything that we've had here so far, like one of the newest experiences, um, way better than, than Memory Lane, Pisali. The atmosphere of it all with the, the trains running through, a lot of locals using this as kind of a, a connector between different parts of uh, one side of the tunnel to the other. Uh, a lot of traffic. It's like, there's so much energy, so much excitement. Everyone's kind of half drunk. But yes, highly recommend this spot. Definitely come here when you got some time want to do yakitori, this is a spot to come do in Tokyo. So we're at the legendary Okonomiyaki place in the Asakusa area called Somitaro. Um, it seems really awesome in terms of ambiance. Uh, a ton of famous people have come here, but you are here for the Japanese pancake, of course. So we've ordered two different Okonomiyakis. Uh, what's kind of neat about this place is that you pretty much DIY your own. So they've given us some instructions. It's in the English menu. And surprise that actually a lot of people here do speak English. So it's really easy to get in and order. So we're gonna get this done. This is the Gomo Kyuten. It's got steamed cuttlefish, steamed shrimp, egg, cabbage, and minced beef and pork. Lots of batter, of course. And the second one that we ordered is called mochiten. And mochiten is rice cake, cheese, and corn. Piping hot. They got the fans here, of course, because it's, it's, it's live and hot right now. So what I'm doing is I'm just mixing it up right now. Here goes. Look how packed it is with all the goods. Okay, so it's five minutes on, five minutes the other side. The way you do it, is basically you you paste on the sauce. Next is mayo, and you kind of go nuts with it. And then finally, the green stuff. Break it up into pizza slices, and we're ready to eat. Something special about making your very own. And then it was on to round two with our second attempt and the mochi ten. Cutting it up into pizza slices. It's really sticky though. I think it's kind of why we got this one because we wanted to try something different. Look at these rice cakes. Mm. Got much more of a chewy texture in there. Kind of like a mochi okonomiyaki. Worth it. Well, that was a superb but very hot okonomiyaki place here in Asakusa. And I'll say that it was incredibly delicious and made with love. There's not a lot of other better ways to spend $10 